Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to Stag Stuff. Um, first of all, apologies, uh, not having posted anything for a very, very long time. Um, <laughs> there is a very simple explanation to this. Um, I went on a fabulous trip uh, back in the early summer. Yeah, that's how long, it's, how long ago it was. Um, and I thought, oh, let's throw everything at it as far as the videoing is concerned. And um, I'd got three cameras in the car, I've got a drone with me, all sorts of stuff. And it's really stretched my abilities as far as video editing is concerned. When I'm doing a, a nice little um, maintenance job, which is what I'm gonna be doing today, um, it's just one camera, easy peasy. So you've just got one line of video to edit and trying to synchronize um, three simultaneous cameras um, yeah, it's stretching me. So I've decided to abandon posting things in order. And so if you get to see a nice summer's ride <laughs> in the middle of winter, you'll now know why, um, especially if you've watched this one. So today what we're going to do is uh, a fiddly little job. Um, I've got a problem with my um, choke cable. Um, I'll explain. So this all started a couple of years ago, actually more than a couple of years ago, that's probably three or four. Um, I went to get the car MOT'd and I'm guessing the person that uh, MOT'd it um, had never done a manual choke before. And basically, as you can see here, that just keeps twisting round and round and round. Um, it's a right disaster and, and you cannot, it won't release. And even when it does release, there we go, pushed it back in, um, it doesn't release um, on the connection in the engine. So I'll just show you where we've got that. So on a stag engine, of course, we've got twin choke carburetor. So we've got two choke cables. <clears throat> um, this one, as far as I can see, seems to be absolutely fine. It, uh, so you can see down there, it goes nice and loose um, after it's been uh, finished with. This choke cable doesn't, and um, this bar just here, it's gonna, uh, problem is if I put my hands down there, you then can't see it, but there is a bar just here, and um, it doesn't disengage the choke, and it also isn't pulling the um, engine tick over up enough. So what we're going to do is going to take, uh, actually we'll detach it here so that we've got a nice uh, easy access so we can get this cable undone. And um, I have got, where are we, over here, a nice spanky, oh good grief, do you know what, why is it things that always get tangled up, a nice spanky new um, choke replacement and uh, we'll have a go at fitting that. So yes, enjoy another episode of Stag Stuff with a complete amateur that knows nothing about how to fix things. Uh, so uh, point one, don't follow what I'm doing, but do sit back and enjoy a good laugh as I try and fix my choke, fix my choke cable. So I've just come to undo these and I've spotted another problem. Does this ever happen to you guys? Look at this, the uh, water bottle has come detached and it's now uh, welded itself, bloody hell, onto, that's not coming off. That's welded itself onto the exhaust manifold. <sighs> Two jobs, okay. Well, I keep saying something along the lines of the joys of owning an old classic. Hey. <sighs> Okay, first things first, because I'm going to get this nicely out of the way. Is this, this is why I did the videos in the first place. So we've got a nice bright green to the right, which goes to the uh, negative. And then we've got a dull green and black. It's a ridiculous thing, isn't it? Look at this. They're both green and black cables. But uh, right, so dull one goes to the live, bright one goes to the negative. So we'll remember that. 
well, I suppose I've got to be grateful for small mercies. Um, at least I hadn't already detached the gap, uh, battery or anything like that. So I'm going to warm up the manifold and then it should release because it just will not come off. There we go. Look at that! So if any of you guys have had the same problem with the uh, water bottle detaching from its bracket, um, do let me know. Tell me what you've done to um, create a more stable um, mount. Because it, it just doesn't seem to... This is this, it's the second time this has happened to me. So. Uh, this is now going to be my third replacement water bottle. Anyway, at least we can get on with fixing the choke now. Okay, first things first, because it's an electrical job we're going to be doing, um, as far as this choke cable is concerned, um, being as we're going to be getting in there to, to... Well, I've got to take the radio out to get access to where the choke cable is, so I can see what I'm doing. Disconnect the battery! Okay, next job to do is going to be uh, removing this, that, just moving it away just so that I've got access to that little area down there. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so there she is, nicely moved forward. So I've now got full access to uh, the fast idle spindle, uh, but I've not had to disconnect everything underneath here. So that's nice and easy. Right, so we'll take that clip off, undo the cables here, and then we will go into the cockpit of the car and start working from that end. Now what I'm going to do is just put a pair of long nose pliers on, keep hold of it because, there we go, you let go of these things and they go flying everywhere. There we go, that's that job done. Now all I've got to do is undo this, um, so we get a tiny little bolt. This is, look how, there we go, that's how far it should be going forward. Okay, first things first, so I pushed a little bit of the cabling back through so I could see where it came in through here, and as we can see, um, cabling comes through the same place as where the, um, I've got an oil filter, uh, sorry, an oil pressure gauge fitted, so you can see that it's the same place as where that is coming through. Let's just focus in on there, there we go just in there. So all I've now got to do, all I've got to do, he says, is take the radio out so I've got some access to the side of where the choke cable is. And hopefully I'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, I might have to take the heater uh, box out as well. We'll see. Um, just hope we don't have to take the whole of the centre console back. It's always an intriguing thing when you're trying to remember how you put something in when you've got to then take it back out. So, again, if you've if you've never put a radio in, you've kind of got these bracket things here, and these have to be pushed up, and then you can pull them out. So that's basically what they look like. They're just sort of bracket like that. 
just take this washer off. Actually, no, I don't think I'm going to bother because this is. And the same thing with this one. Push this up. And then on your little get. Okay, can't do it with two hands. <laughs> of course, what I meant was you can't do it with one hand. So anyway, now I've got rid of these two brackets. All I now need to do, pull this forward and disconnect the plugs at the other end. This is why I've um, disconnected the battery as soon as you've got wires exposed. Something always short circuits with me every single time. But once I've got this out of the way, I should be able to see what I'm doing with this. Okay, so I'm hoping I've got enough access now I've taken the radio out. What I've been led to believe is that that black box which sits on top of the choke cable, that is what illuminates the choke light and it is just clipped on there. Um, and then I'm hoping that all I've got to do is to undo that bolt and there'll be something just behind it that it just bites onto and that will be it but of course it probably isn't well I was wanting to see what the clip looked like so that I could get as it sort of clips on somewhere here this is the new one um, this is about as useless as a fart in a spacesuit or as useful rather as a fart in a spacesuit so I've gone to the actual workshop manual uh, the stag repair workshop manual the, the the real daddy of them all and looking at this it says one thing that I, I didn't really want to do but it does say uh, where are we now then I've got to um, remove the heater control knobs then remove the two screws securing the uh, console panel and then lift the center console forward to gain access. Just what I didn't want to do. Well, I really have had to bite the bullet and do as I'm told. So this is going to come out. Center console is going to come out. So I've got to undo those two screws there. And I can take this panel out and I have to detach these. It looks like the hole off the center console's got to come forward so that I can then get behind there. What a bastard of a job. You really wouldn't think it would be so difficult. Now when you're taking these things out, do make sure you get a good image as to what color goes where um, and then you are going to be able to know where to put them back again because there's a hell of a lot of wires underneath this uh, center console okay so we've uh, got everything out what you now do to take this off and then we can then remove the whole center console is you put pull this over the gear lever turn it over and you'll be able to see that you've got a ring underneath here and some little screws you can then undo this detach the uh, gear lever sleeve from this box just here okay okay so it said slide this forward so that's what I've done created a little bit of room just here and in fact what I can now do is to push this back and then hopefully that means that I can then once I've got that through there I can have enough space yeah here we go that's it to then get hold of this. Yep. Yeah, hey! There we go. And now we can have a look at this offending item and get that off. And in fact, yes. Hey, look at that. There we go. I can just pull the whole thing off. And yeah, this little screw on there. So that's what we've got to get undone. So I'm guessing just unscrew that and it's going to come off. Okay, so a little electrician screwdriver. Well, it's quite loose. 
Oop. There we go. Ah, there we go. So we've got that one contact there. So that's going to determine whether it's on or off. Oh yeah, and it buzz just there. That's it. There we go. Now I know what to do. Right, so I thought I'd just have a little look at this because this piece here, it's clear that what we've got to do is it is literally just well get stay in focus. It's got to uh, just screw in. That then holds the mechanism in place. And then we've got these little ridges either side here. And that one's got damaged. And that's probably why they put the uh, tie in. Because we've got to slide this on. I'm just going to open this up tiny, tiny bit. That's it. Right, so I've got that there. Walk it along. And then get it into place. That's the plan. We've got to do that in this blooming tight area. But you can see what basically what I've got to do. I've got to get that to go there. Staying nice and tight so that it doesn't fall off once I have applied um, ah, and that's so you've got that that goes through the hole there is the contact and then that locks in the other hole I'm guessing right okay there we are and that's an earth I'm guessing okay okay so before threading this through the console you need to take this off. <laughs> I'm just telling you that because um, I've just threaded it through the console before taking this off. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. We've got these two bits here. Got to hold these this side while I thread this through. So it's just. Drop these on here. That's it. Do the same for the second show cable. That's it. So, right, I've now got them here. So then when I'm threading it through, I've got something to secure the other end on. So we've got this far now, I've got the clip on, but I now need to slide it forward over that catch, and that's proving to be a bit difficult, but we'll just keep on going. I'm just thinking if I can just prise it with a screwdriver or something like that, it might just do it, but anyway. Well, amazingly, I didn't need to prise too hard, it was just a case of 
a little bit of TLC. So it is now in position. It's kind of locked into where the hole is, but what I now need to do is to get underneath this. So I'm gonna to have to tilt the whole of this center, central piece like this. I think lie in the passenger foot well, uh, facing upside down to then just do up the, can you see that little screw there? Which will then give it the, you know, tightness on here. Cause at the moment it's, as you can see, it's just wobbling around. Now, just a little tip for you. When you're threading the cables back, do make sure that you've got the cables going through this because otherwise you'll not be able to get the unit going back that way. Okay. So we'll put this above there so we can see what we're doing. for the radio above there. Make sure we're not snagging anything. Oh, 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 blimey. Good grief, I don't believe it. <laughs> Went in far too easily. Make sure I've not got any wires snagged here. That's it, we're back in. Okay, it's the let's put it back together video now. Uh, but I'm not gonna put it all back together just yet because I kind of want to make sure that there's nothing that needs redoing before I put the center console back properly so I'm just going to put these two screws in so it's held in place as it should be So I'm now going to go to the engine and uh, uh, connect up the, the wires there, try starting the car, make sure that uh, everything is working as it should do, and then put the console back together again. Okay, so I've adjusted up the fast idle, which is just that screw just there. It's now clear of the fast idle rocker. Uh, but one thing that, uh, uh, just to point out, that is quite hard to push the fast idle now. So something I have read is that in fact, when we start up a stag, it always does help if you press the accelerator a little bit, then the fast idle rocker can move freely. You see just here like that. So I'm gonna, I've got no idea if that's set right or not. We'll only find out once we start the car up. So let's just thread the choke cable through. There we go. Right, I'm gonna push that all the way through there like that. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna let it rest back. Move that out so you can see. I'm gonna rest it, let it rest back. There we go, like that. And then we'll put this here. And then we know that that is set right for the choke in the non-operating position. Just about there. There we are. Okay, That's nice and straight. So now we'll just tighten up Tighten up that screw there, so we clamp onto the cable. And then on this side, we've done exactly the same. It's, uh, choke is fully open, so there's no um, tension on the thing, on the cable, and uh, the cable is not rubbing on anything either. So we will now pop a clip on just here. Right, now for the moment of truth. Is this going to work? So I haven't uh, 
put anything back together inside yet just in case so right. so first of all let's just see does this work and are we going to get a choke uh, illumination yes we do excellent stuff and Well, so all we've got to do now is just put the centre console back, um, reverse order us to what we did taking it apart, and uh, we've got a stag that's back on the road. So that's brilliant. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed my trials and tribulations as I've replaced the choke cable. Um, I hope that'll give you some tips as to what to do and what not to do. And uh, until the next episode of Stag Stuff, take care and drive safely. If you've enjoyed this video, please do click on the like and subscribe buttons. And if you click on the bell, YouTube will be good enough to even notify you when we post new videos.